My name is Ian Burris and this screencast supports my application to the SSI Fellowship Programme. I'm based in IT Services Research in Queen Mary University of London, leading a central RSE group to support research staff and students across the university. Historically, I'm a mathematical biologist and previously was a senior computational epidemiologist at Public Health England. I'm a certified software carpentry instructor and have helped organise and run events for Research Software London. As an RSE without my own research programme, I promote code quality and research software developed by others. For quality assurance, I'm particularly interested in usability, maintainability and standards compliance. I'm keen for code to be reproducible and portable, with careful consideration of data management. Even as a group leader, I get to do RSE work. A lot of this is ad hoc focus support for users of our high performance computing system. I see real user code from a variety of disciplines. Recently, I've looked at build systems, profiling and refactoring, parallel debugging and checkpoint repair, and implementing continuous integration and deployment. As an RSE group leader, I promote code quality concepts in a number of ways. I'm accountable for the work of the group and guide my staff. I give seminars to academic departments covering RSE practices, and I frequently have discussions with individuals and small groups. We also moderate code review clubs and provide specific software development support. Many of those current responsibilities I've just described align with the interests of the Institute, so why would the Fellowship Programme allow me to do more to enhance the quality of research code, both at Queen Mary and in the wider community? Benefits of being a Fellow mentioned in the Programme Launch webinar apply to my situation. Visibility as a Fellow of the Institute would improve outreach efforts within my university. Recognition by an established institute, which has a motto of better software, better research, lends credence to the RSE ideals I and my team encourage. The platform offered by the SSI, including blog publication, and the peer support network of new and established fellows are also valuable here. More tangibly, my plan for the fellowship includes a series of workshops addressing two closely related areas of code quality and sustainability. These areas are legacy code and reproducibility. There's a lot of very old software used in research, especially with high performance computing. Much of this is seen as a black box, part of an established workflow. Often, however, the software is being actively developed, with a supervisor passing down code to students requesting the addition of a new feature or change to a calculation. There is wide awareness of pitfalls around ongoing use and development of older code, and at the collaborations workshop last year, we wrote a speed blog looking at these. There are also courses on programming modern Fortran, which aim to make new code not look like legacy code from its start. These messages, however, frequently fail to make it to those researchers who are not already invested in modern good practices. For example, in my support role, I've been asked to help debug a single code base containing a confusing mix of programming paradigms covering the last 40 years. We see established code bases being re-implemented because the C or Fortran code is not seen as maintainable or compatible with other components of the group's work. A group may have legacy code that is fine up until the departmental cluster is upgraded or an obscure compiler's license can't be renewed. Considering aspects of legacy code, I'll develop workshops to look at risk assessment and mitigation. In hands-on sessions with participants' own software, we'll cover topics in modernising and enhancing maintainability of older code, including surveying tools and testing techniques. We'll also consider language interoperability so that legacy code sufficiently updated can be used in other frameworks without re-implementation. Reproducibility in research software includes these legacy code concerns. It isn't reproducible if we can't run it. Even when implementing, again, we need an initial assurance that our new and older line. But it's a much broader topic than just being able to run old code. As a creator of research software, we should understand what reproducibility means in our specific context. Should we guarantee bit exact reproduction of results? Do we have non-determinism through our parallelism? Maybe we need to store and reuse a seed for our pseudo-random number generator. How do we link our output to a potentially unstable input data set? Over the past year, we've seen attacks on software used to inform public policy, criticising race conditions, for example, when the reproducibility claims of the software are for the ensemble or ranking stability of intervention strategies. Through the fellowship, I will host workshops to help researchers understand and define reproducibility in their software. The workshops will raise awareness of techniques to provide the required levels of reproducibility assurance, such as testing and containerization. Reproducibility in research software is a vast topic, and requirements and outlook depend heavily on research domain. The individual workshops will target specific and distinct research fields to maximise benefit to participants at each. I've developed reproducible disease models, such as for creating scenarios for the UK government's pandemic influenza exercise, Exercise Cygnus. I know many other researchers and modellers dealing with reproducibility and disease modelling. 
The fellowship, however, will ease the inclusion of research domains beyond those of which I have direct experience. An existing fellow supports a workshop focusing on geomorphology. Considerations of reproducibility when studying a physically changing landscape are very different from those of a disease transmission model. The fellowship is key to developing a network of individuals who can provide the disparate input required to successfully run these workshops. In this screencast, I've tried to set out how an SSI fellowship will enhance my outreach efforts in promoting an RSE culture across research disciplines. With recognition and support of the institute and its fellows, the proposed workshops can be developed with a much broader skill base and a correspondingly broad audience. I believe that leading a central core-funded RSC group close to the HBC support team, as well as being an active software carpentry instructor and organiser, makes me well-placed to disseminate these workshops. The fellowship will directly fund expert participation in the workshops, as well as my own personal development attending other conferences and workshops. Thank you for your attention.